create a new folder within our SRC, and we're going to call this hooks. Inside of this directory, what we need to do is create a new file called useproducts.js. And in this file, we're going to use it to create a custom hook to fetch the database information from our back end. So what we want to do here is start off with RAFCE, and we don't need to import React here. What we need to do is import use state and use effect because those are built in React hooks that we're going to be using here. Within our use products here, we're going to create what's called a state in React. And this is going to take two items within array brackets. First is going to be the state variable. We're going to call that products. You guys can call this whatever you want. And then we're going to set our state function, which is going to be called set products. And we need to make this equal to our use state. And inside of this use state is where we can initialize the value of our products state variable. So if I put one here, this value is going to start off as one. But in our case, we want to initialize it as an empty array. Next, we're going to create a use effect. And inside of this use effect, we're going to pass a callback function where we are going to fetch the data from the database. And here we're going to create a function called fetch products. And this is going to be an asynchronous function. So I'll specify async here. If you want to learn more about that, I have a video, leave a link up top and down below for you guys. We don't need to pass any parameters into this, so we'll leave that blank. And inside of this function, we want to use a try. Inside of this try, we'll create a variable called response and we're going to use await, and we want to await the information coming from our database, and we want to get that information using fetch. And here we need to specify where we want to get this from, so we're going to get this from our locally hosted server, so I'll specify a local host, and then since we started this server on port 4000 in our backend, we need to specify that here. And we're already connected to our database from our back end. So we just need to select what collection we want to get. So we'll specify our products collection here. Now I need to create a variable called data. And again, I want to use await. And here I want to await the response, but I also want to turn this into a JSON. And then from here, I can call the set products state function to set the variable here to the data coming from my backend using my data variable. Now I need to set up a catch and I want to pass my error into this catch. And this is only going to run if we have an issue getting any information from our database here. So inside of this, it's essential that we console dot error. And we want to say there's an error fetching products and then we want to display our error. Underneath this, we want to call our function. So we'll say fetch products here. And this is called like a normal function. And then between the curly brace and the parentheses, we need to tell this use effect when it needs to run. So we'll include a comma. And since we only need this to run one time when our application renders, we'll use empty brackets here, like an empty array. And instead of returning this div, what we want to do is return our products, which again is going to be this variable here, which is now storing all the information from our database. Now I can go back to my app.jsx and I can successfully import this into my app.jsx using just a normal imports again. And I want to import my use products and you'll see Visual Studio Code help me out by getting it from my hooks and then use products here. And what I need to do now is go down here within the functional component, create a variable called products and make this equal to the use products, which is getting the information from our database. Tap here to see what happens next.